by me and asking more questions. The scenario is this. In one hour, all knowledge on the Earth is going to be destroyed. And you have the opportunity to pass one piece of information to future generations. So I can ask you, what is the most significant thing that you know that you would like to pass along? And you can actually answer this in six words, one sentence. And there will be a lot of diverse answers, but obviously there are some answers that are going to be better than others. The answer that you should provide is that all things are made out of us. Because without this, we don't know very much about the world we live in. With this, we can reconstruct our periodic table, discover our genetic code, sequence it, make vaccines, make antibiotics, make computer chips, and reconstruct the world of the translation. It's the same with the I like ice cream. No matter how many different ways I write it, the message is still the same as long as I write it in a language that you understand. In the past, we thought about this, and we came up with this statement in one of our articles that genomes based on the, the uh, quantum basis of matter allow the manifestation of highly organized and diverse living organisms. So this is sort of a bridge or a transition quantum world, the world that we live in and see at the microscopic and macroscopic level. And it seems that the transition is bridged by genetic instructions in living organisms. So that's how we do that. The origin of life locations is also a difficult question to ask and answer. A recent article placed the origin of the first genetic instructions 10 billion years old. This was simply published about three months ago. That makes it about five to six billion years older than the Earth. So, genetic instructions preceding the origin of the Earth. So, was Darwin's warm little pond correct? Mineral surfaces, ocean vents, subsurface, extraterrestrial locations. These are all locations that have been proposed or hypothesized for the origin of life. Or as our previous speaker, uh, myself, we have hypothesized, what about a microscopic gel with countless microscopic locations on the Earth or elsewhere? And so this uh, is directly re related to Professor Pollock's previous talk. What we hypothesized was that a gel stru structure would be a very good structure for a pre-cell or prebiotic wife. And it doesn't need a membrane like living organisms need. It would be microscopic in size, meaning there could be countless numbers of them on the face of the Earth or any other place. On a, on a, a single pin of a, a head of a pin, you can place millions of bacterial cells. So we're talking about a microscopic origin of light in a gel. Professor Pollock spoke about infrared-driven water in a gel. We could have diffusion of gases. We know hydrogen would have been abundant diffuse in and out of a gel. You don't need a gel membrane at all or a cytoplasmic membrane. And he also spoke about gradients. And so we put this all together and because it is uh, profound and starting to be better understood in living organisms today, there's no reason to think that it wasn't important in the origin of life. We also know that hydrogen is still used by some microorganisms today and we know that thermal cycling is an important way uh, for cells to carry reactions uh, in the absence of enzymes. Hot and cold, night and day, something that happens on the Earth uh, very every day. And this might have also been uh, responsible for the origin of life. We put this together in the following way. Uh, electromagnetic radiation being everywhere, uh, producing exclusion zone water, easy water, a gel-like cytoplasm of the need for a cytoplasmic membrane. And because the earth is covered in surfaces like minerals, that may have been involved as a mineral surface as well in the prebiotic life in the origin of life. So gels, prebiotic life, to cells which are capable of growth and division. Remember, evolution only occurs at the organism level. You have to have something that can grow and divide or die to have evolution. To microscopic biofilms, which are really the preferred mode of growth for many organisms. 
to microbial mats, which are common and can be found in fossilized remains, to the first few karyotic organisms a couple billion years ago, to you. So this is a hypothesis that we have proposed. We haven't been beaten up in the literature too badly yet. In a 2005 and a recent 2012 uh, article that we authored together. But we do welcome all kinds of criticism because that way we can define our thinking. So if you reflect <laughs> upon transformative research and thinking how to think, we can, we can make some bigger <coughs> statements as well. Research scholarship is immensely difficult, as your previous speaker just noted. Effort does not always equal success. Significant scholarship does not equal normal activities. Transformative research is much riskier, unlikely to be funded, requires more creative thinking and visualization. Things that aren't easy to teach in the educational system as it is today. Less recycling of knowledge and more transformative knowledge. The majority of researchers are not seeking breakthroughs. I hate to say this, but journal rejection rates are at an all-time high in some areas, 90, 95%, 99% even. This means that a lot of the work that is being done is being rejected by peers. That's generally not what transformative research is about. But however, you must remember transformative research could even be in that rejection category because people would simply have two conservative views and think that Oh, this is more like science fiction. This is not real science. Normal trendy research may be very good for enhancing one's career, but of no value to humanity and science. Be aware of this. What you really need to do are things that are useful. As our first speaker said, seven billion humans need uh, sustainability. But we need to look at transformative knowledge and activities to do that. So going ahead, we know that some predictions uh, show that knowledge will double every 11 years, every 11 hours, excuse me. Panic is not a plan, knowledge is for using, not memorizing. On a global scale, we have profound questions and transformative activities that we also must do. And you know what these are. You're confronted with them every day in the news and on, on the internet. We certainly need to be transformative in our thinking about managing human population growth, pandemics, climate change, basic human rights, food production, food reserves, rather, an all-time low, probably in the order of 30 to 50 days, energy, public education, communication, transportation, security, and just about everything we do fails if you don't have an educational component attached to it. We also know that the internet is an, is an immense component of our knowledge of human. It's also good for contacting authors that want to work together. Jerry and I wrote that very first article without actually ever meeting each other or knowing what we actually looked like. We just contacted each other and said, can we put these ideas together? So let's jettison some paradigms. Keep them to good. Let's remove the mental constipation. Let's do whatever works to get it right so that we can have forward positive change for humanity. Remember that technology is a powerful tool, but human relationships generate and implement solutions. This came from a recent Scientist Without Borders um, article just a few weeks ago. People's lives should be defined by their knowledge, not by their ignorance. In the past, I've had the opportunity to work with several you know, world-class scientists. I put some of those names up here today. And these people help you sharpen your thinking, your writing, how you think about the world. And it's actually just a lot of fun, too. The fun is good. Lastly, if you don't believe me that your imagination is more important than knowledge, you can believe this person. Because their profound questions and transformative knowledge has affected us in every way. And it will affect us into the future in ways that we probably still don't know yet.